Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video and that is because I've been working on some home projects during quarantine. One of those projects was um, a bathroom makeover. So in this video, I'm going to be completely making over our hall bathroom. Um, it's a bathroom that we don't use very often and it's been neglected. It's never gotten any kind of updates over the almost 20 years that we've lived in our house. So I finally decided to um, get to work on it. It's been a project on my to-do list for a really long time. So I hope that you enjoy this video. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. My name is Sharon if you're new here and um, I do videos on like home projects. I do grocery hauls. I do cleaning videos, um, shop with me's, just, you know, just a different um, kind of variety of stuff, whatever I'm in the mood for, to be honest. So here I'm just showing you some before shots of the bathroom. We've got very old linoleum floors that are pulling away from dirty baseboards. We've got dark walls and just a lot of dents and things. This bathroom really needs a lot of help. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is clean the walls and make sure that they don't have any grime on them or dust um, because I don't wanna paint over all of that. So here you can see like I don't know what all this is on the walls. I can't even remember the last time anyone took a shower in here, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down. But first I'm going to take a Swiffer and just make sure that I can get all the dust off the wall first. So once I got all the dust off the walls and gave them a really good scrub down, I went ahead and patched all of the holes. This is actually where an old towel bar was. So I'm just gonna take this off and then it's gonna leave a hole behind, but I bought a patch to put over it. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. I bought this wall patch at Walmart. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or any store like that. But they only cost about five dollars and they're really easy to work with um, you just kind of peel the back off it sort of works kind of like a sticker um, peel the back off cut the uh, piece however big you need it and just put it over the wall and once you put it over the wall you just sort of spackle over it and then sand it down and then once you've finished sanding it down you can't even tell that there was ever a hole in the wall This is the spackle that I'm using. And again, you can just get this at Home Depot or Lowe's or um, probably even Walmart, but it goes on pink. And then once it dries, it turns white. So you can tell when it's completely dry. I really wanted to brighten this bathroom up since it was such a dark color before. So I'm just using some paint that I had on hand already. This is Sherwin-Williams satin paint and it's in the color pure white. One of the things that I liked about this house when we bought it almost 20 years ago was the color of this bathroom because I knew that it was a color that I would never pick myself, but I thought it was really pretty. It's antique pewter and it is a bare paint from Home Depot, but there's no window in this bathroom and it's just really, really dark. And I just really wanna brighten it up and kind of make it a lot lighter in here. Um, it's actually gonna take me about three coats of this paint to cover this color because it was so dark, even though it's technically like a one coat coverage, um, but it took a lot of coats to not be able to actually see that gray through it. 
So I couldn't wait to take this ugly light fixture down. It's horrendous. But I knew that when I took it down, I was gonna have an issue because the hole in the wall was actually bigger than the base of my new light fixture. So I ended up having to do a lot of patchwork on this wall. Um, I had to put a piece of board behind the drywall to patch the hole and then put in another piece of drywall, if that makes sense. Um, you'll see kind of in the clips coming up. And then once I got the hole smaller, I just spackled over it and then sanded that down so that you could hardly tell that um, there was ever a problem there. Did you call me cause you had to? Cause you know I throw your suitcase out the window. I didn't film myself putting the light fixture up, but here it is after I finally got it up. It was fairly easy to put up. It is the brand Better Homes and Gardens, and I bought the light at Walmart. It was only around $70, I think. So now I'm going to get to work on this bathroom vanity. Um, it actually is an oak vanity but probably about 10 years ago I painted it a color called French Roast when I was going through my dark espresso wood phase um, and I didn't do a very good job I didn't do any kind of like priming or anything like that um, so let's not focus here on what's underneath the cabinet and that huge mess we're just going to talk about the cabinet itself but I'm going to do it right this time and I'm going to sand everything down and then once I sand it, I will be priming it and painting it. So now that I've got it sanded, I'm just taping off where the cabinet meets the wall so I don't get any paint on the wall itself. And this is the primer that I use. It's Valspar Stain Blocking Primer. It's really, really thick. It's almost as thick as glue, but I use this on any kind of um, wood that I paint. You don't necessarily have to sand anything down if you use this, but I always like to sand down just, you know, just as a precaution, just kind of trying to do it right so that the, the paint actually stays on longer and I don't have any kind of chipping or anything like that. But this stuff is really thick. I don't know if you could see earlier, but the reason that I didn't pull this left drawer out is because when I open the drawer, it actually hits the molding on the wall because the bathroom door is um, kind of sits at an angle. So I'm just going to paint it with it still in like this. I'll just kind of pull it away a little bit whenever I start painting um, the actual drawer itself. But the right drawer I just took out and I'll paint that one separately. And of course I took the doors off and I'll be painting those separately as well. Now that I've got the cabinet doors um, sanded and primed and cleaned and everything, they've dried and now I'm going to actually start painting them. I'm using this Sherwin-Williams paint. It's in a satin finish. That's usually what I use for cabinets. And the color is Dorian Gray. It's kind of a mix. It's, it's not like too dark. It's not too light. It's kind of the perfect gray in my opinion. Um, it's really, really pretty. It looks really light, but once I start painting here, you'll see like against that white primer that it's actually a little darker, um, but it's, it's really nice in the bathroom. You'll see it later. So now I'm inside and I'm going to paint the cabinet inside and you'll see this paint actually looks really dark in here but it's just the lighting and once it dries it'll be very very light but it's just a really pretty gray. 
Now as far as the hardware goes, I painted the hardware oil rubbed bronze years ago when I painted the cabinet. So I'm just going to keep the existing hardware and spray paint it farmhouse black with the rust-oleum spray paint. Um, it's just easier to keep the existing hardware and not buy new ones. It's cheaper and you don't have to like redrill holes and all that so it's just a lot easier. Um, and then here I'm going to be adding some wallpaper to one of the walls. I decided to use this shiplap wallpaper from Threshold. I got this at Target and it was about $35 a roll and it took an entire roll to do just like one short wall. And I do recommend buying this little thing here to flatten your wallpaper. I don't know what it's called, but I definitely couldn't have gotten the wallpaper straight without it. It was only about $5 at Lowe's, so if you're doing wallpaper, definitely buy one of those. So again, I didn't film myself putting up all of the wallpaper, but I took off the globes on the light fixture just so I could work around the light fixture a lot easier. This wallpaper was pretty easy to put up, but it's also kind of time consuming and tedious at times. Um, just having to kind of pull away and put it back. If I mess it up in spots, it's pretty easy to kind of take down and start over with. Um, but it made a huge difference in the bathroom and I'm really glad that I decided to put it up. I did paint all of the trim in the bathroom. I didn't film all of that, but I just wanted to show you guys like the difference between the old trim and how yellow it had become and the new white. This is the floor that I decided to go with and I purchased this at Home Depot. It is the Traffic Master Peel and Stick Vinyl Tiles and it's in the color Taupe Oak. Um, I think one box cost around $35 or so and I only used about half the box in the bathroom. And those scratch marks that you see are from my cats. They love cardboard. And here's a nice view of the old vinyl flooring, linoleum, whatever this is. I think it used to be kind of white and it's also kind of turned yellow over the years. And I'm just going to lay these floors right on top of this one. So I am definitely no expert in flooring, but I did put these floors down in our other bathroom a couple of months ago. So I'll give you a couple of tips just based on things that I learned and mistakes that I made. You definitely do not want to start against a wall. You always want to start in the center of your room. I started against the wall and if your wall is not straight as you lay the floors out, you're going to wind up with gaps where your seams don't match up exactly and it's just not going to look that great. Um, the other tip that I would give you is to always lay the floor out first before you start actually unpeeling it and laying it down and just kind of figure out the pattern that you want to use before you start laying the floor. And that's what I'm doing here. I just sort of looked at our wood floors that are in the rest of our house and kind of used that same pattern. And here I'm starting in the center of the bathroom and I'm just going to start laying it down here. This flooring is really easy to work with. If you do make a mistake, it's really easy to just pull it right back up and then lay it down wherever you want to. Um, so I would highly recommend it for somebody who just likes to do little DIY projects or if you just want to do something kind of temporary um, instead of you know paying someone a fortune to come in and redo your floors. 
and here in a second you're gonna see my little kitty cat Steve he's coming out to check out what I'm doing Aren't you tired of the drama? You use your words like they are knives. Mm -hmm. I don't need that type of drama and trying to be tough for the day time. You try to make yourself feel better by taking me down. Once I fell, but now I'm strong, I'm ready for the rematch. So here are the finished floors. I would say this probably took me maybe two to three hours. The hardest part is just cutting the pieces that go around the toilet, but overall it's a really simple way to just give your floors a new look without spending a lot of money or a lot of time. So the next thing that I'm going to do in here is paint the door and I'm just showing you here how yellow the door has become over the years. You can see that I've actually already painted the trim around the door so the door has just really faded and it looks awful. It's going to make a huge difference but I'm using this semi-gloss interior paint from Valspar and it's also in the exact color of the walls. It's just in pure white. I had a little hook on the back of the door and it was gold um, so I just took that down and I spray painted that in the farmhouse black spray paint that I also used on the hinges and then I also painted the hinges to the door here um, I didn't film that but it's just a really easy way to kind of update things without having to go buy new hinges So you can see here what a huge difference just giving the door a good coat of paint and then spray painting that little hook made. Once you've seen all the things, all the places, I hope it means that you'll come home to me once you travel the world, all the space. Okay, so we're almost done here. So the last thing that I did was put up a new shower curtain. So I bought this shower rod at Walmart. It was $10 and it's actually in a bronze color. Um, they did have a black, but it looked more like a like stone wash. So I just went with the bronze. And then here I got some shower hooks from Better Homes and Gardens. And then I found this shower curtain at Walmart as well. And it was actually on clearance for $11. The original price was $19.99. So 
So the really cool thing about this shower curtain is that you can hang it with the stripes going vertically or you can hang it with the stripes going horizontally. There's actually um, holes for the hooks on two different sides. And here I'm just hanging it horizontally because I just prefer my stripes horizontal, I guess. All right, guys, we're done, and that's going to do it for this bathroom makeover. Here is a quick before shot just one more time just to give you an idea of what it looked like before. And here is the after. It is like night and day. I think the bathroom looks so good. I should have done this years ago. Everything that I did was just really simple, um, easy to do, and inexpensive. So if you're looking to makeover your bathroom i hope that maybe this gave you some ideas and hope that you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i still have to put some things in the bathroom like um, i've got a shelf to go on the wall and i'm just kind of looking for a nice rug to go in here and possibly some hardware on the cabinet so stay tuned for future videos and i'll see you guys in the next one Yeah, I know that